Hey now, it's Sharon and I'm back to share some policing experience with you, along with some military experiences. If you're new to the channel, I, I'm a retired detective. I worked for 20 years for a Southeastern city in the US and I was also in the military. I'm sharing my policing experiences, military experiences and perspectives in hopes of just helping others in similar situations or just giving you a different way of uh, seeing some things possibly. And with that being said, last week, I talked about interviewing for the community policing unit in my agency. And the question, one of the questions they asked me was, what question would you ask if you were on the board for community policing? And I told them, I said, I would ask, um, who do you influence outside of your immediate family? Because it is about community. And, you know, you can see them thinking like, that's a really good question. But I had to answer that myself. Who do, who do I influence? I answered that early on in my uh, career and outside of my immediate family, no one. I had a group of friends. I was the youngest and I'm sure they influenced me just like I influenced them for the better, but I wasn't thinking about influencing at that time. And so uh, I didn't start to really consider how I influenced until I went into the military and I started, they started giving me leadership positions. Um, I was given a position, I was an E5 and an E7 slot for um, a little while, and there were people hiding over that. But anyway, um, when I got into policing, that's when I really started to pay attention to how I influenced. Uh, remember, I mentioned in the last video about, uh, I think it was, the it was the officer, he said, do you wanna be su successful or significant? And I said, I wanted to be significant. Um, and he was glad that I chose that answer. And, you know, he gave me some advice about everything that I learned, pass it on to the, to the younger folks because, uh, they need the, the, the information, they need the light, so to speak. And, um, I was glad to do it. I, in policing, you see a lot of, uh, backstabbing and, and taking of ideas like I shared last week and everybody wants to be the 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 hero you know on paper <laughs> that's a whole nother story but everybody wants to be the hero and people tend to keep information to themselves and they don't want to share and they want to shine and I wasn't about that I wasn't about that um I wanted to learn and then I want to pass it on and as a matter of fact I remember learning in the military Sergeant Rodriguez said to me he said learn the job that you're on and the one above it and that stayed with me because it, it kept the growth mindset, if you will, because I talked about that also with the fixed mindset. It kept the growth mindset because I always want to know. I always want to know more. Um, I want to know about every position. It keeps your mind open and not fixed like I found myself having a fixed mind when I started to go through the academy and started to uh, buy into the police culture, if you will. And so getting back to the influence part of it, while in uniform, I, I wanted, I made a conscious decision to always be a positive influence. Uh, now, did I always do that? Probably not because I can remember times where my tone might've been like, you know, I ain't really trying to hear all you talking about and stuff like that. Um, so I'm sure not all the time, but I made a conscious effort to be a positive influence. And so when, <laughs> we don't necessarily always think about how we influence people. Remember last week when I talked about having a bias towards white men, I went into policing with that bias. All they did was train me with the bias, right? That's a past experience that I had with a white male. Let me tell you, when I was about 11, 12, I, I don't remember. It was 11, 12, I was 11, 12. And my brother had to be nine, eight or nine. And my, our father, he took us to his old, his job. It was his job. And they had a stack of uh, plywood, like eight by 12 and had a bunch of nails in it. And he was left us there to pull these nails out. Now, when I'm telling you, I was probably short. I was probably like four feet, five, probably five feet. And the stack looked to be about 10 feet. And so me and my brother, we're there pulling the nails out and it was hot. And so we sat against the building 
in the shade and there was like a piece of wood here or something and you could see the plaza but it was empty not really maybe one or two cars and we saw, I saw this guy pull up in the plaza over over the way I didn't pay any attention so my brother he's looking in the window he's like he saw a motorbike it was the boss's my father's boss's son's motorbike and my brother was commenting I'm gonna get me one da 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 and uh I was like, well, let's go back out here and finish these boards up. And before I finished the sentence, I heard, come out with your hands up or come out with your effing hands up. And I had the sense to say, look, I have a hammer in my hand. And he was like, throw it out. So I threw out the hammer and I put my hands out. My brother had turned around by this time and he's kind of scared. And so I come out, we're coming out slowly and I look and all I see is a revolver, uh, uh, the barrel of the revolver and the bullets in the chamber. You talk about scared. And then I saw the barrel, I saw the bullets. And then you, he kind of lowered the gun. And I saw a white male with the thick black mustache, black hair. And he's like, get on the ground. So me and my brother, we lay on the ground and it's hot, mind you, because that's why we were in the shade cooling off. And he's asking us our name, he pats us down, he puts the gun away, and we're still laying on the ground. My brother's like, he's starting to kind of cry because it's hot and the ants are getting on him. And so I tell the officer, can we get up? And um, he's, he, he ignores us. Now I'm like, where's my father? Cause he's supposed to come back, da da da. Some other officers come up, we're still laying on the ground. A white male officer came up, he had Sandy Brown, hair, uh, he had a mustache and a beard. And he's like, hey, hey guys, get up, get up. So we get up and I'm dusting my, my clothes off and my father's pulling up at the time. Needless to say, we didn't get arrested. We didn't get charged with anything. And my father was, I remember my father cursing and screaming at the officers. And uh, my father's friend had to pull him back in the, in the van, like, look, we don't want any problems. And I remember leaving and just having this this anger or resentment towards how the officers treated us and they were all white, right? That's what I'm thinking. So fast forward 45 years, you might as well say almost 40, 45 years later, and I still carry that with me. So that officer did not, I'm sure he's not thinking about me and how he influenced my experience of him being an officer and a white male. I'm sure he's not, he's not thinking about that. But 45 years later, I was thinking about it. So I'm sharing this because I was somebody's villain and I was somebody's victim. And we don't think about that as officers, even in our private lives. Think about that. You're somebody's victim and you're somebody's villain. That officer was my villain, but I held on to the, the preconceived idea that all white males were disrespectful and low key racist. I admit it. I admit it. But of course, I don't think like that anymore, guys. I don't. But I brought that with me, wearing that uniform, that police uniform, that military uniform, until I had to reconcile my own ideas and thoughts and what was in my heart because of the experience of blowing the whistle and the ostracism that I faced and uh, learning, still learning, and I realize now that, again, I'm somebody's victim and somebody's villain, but I'm not trying to be the villain. So I'm ever mindful when I put on that uniform and those spit shine boots, I'm stepping out in humility. Oh, well, that's all I want to share with you guys. I just wanted to give you something to think about. And uh, I'll share again next week and take a look at our online store. The link is in the description. I created notebooks for uh, police, medical, education, fire, and uh, essential workers. That's anybody and everybody. I created notebooks to take some notes in because I like to write. And the links for those are in the description and they go straight to Amazon. You don't have to, um, you know, search around. And as always, everybody, you don't necessarily have to go through a thing to learn from it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.